Welcome to Transformation with Martinet. Martinet Emmons is a transformational life coach who broke free from childhood abuse, sexual trauma, and overcame cancer to become a powerful force of healing and hope for others. Martinet describes traumatic events as fierce emotional tsunamis. They can leave impending doom and destructive tidal waves of emotions that hit you when you least expect it. Martinet helps her clients dive into the depths of their trauma and pain as she stands fiercely advocating for them to shine a light on those experiences and find the lesson in the pain. She serves as a beacon of hope that guides you to see the strength, lessons, and purpose that can be born from the pain. You can feel alive with purpose again when you awaken your dormant strength, step into your power with a sense of peace, and discover a new wave of hope with the right tools and support. Martinet and her guests are here shining their lights today through empowering stories of hardship and transformation to inspire you to find hope and to see that there is a beautiful blue ocean of serenity, happiness, and fulfillment in your future. Transformation with Martinet starts now. Welcome, everyone, to Transformation with Martinet. Welcome back. Um, My show, for those of you who don't know, is about hope. I, as well as my guests, all believe that we as humans can get back up from anything. So also, for those of you that don't know, my show is every Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. And my guest today, without further ado, is Chris Templeton. And we are going to be talking today about finding authenticity. Hello, authenticity, my goodness, in your life, which is the foundation of hope. Welcome, Chris. Please introduce yourself a little more formally, please. Hi, Martine. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really pleased to be here. Um, The quick background on me is I've been in business in online marketing since, well, probably started in 1999. And in 2003, uh, as she loved to call herself, and I love my evil stepmother said to me, hey, read The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. And so that launched me on a bit of a, a journey that continues to this day. And what I've done is developed a, a few questions and a resulting model that have had just a huge impact on my life, how I am with my wife, how I have raised my kids, how I work with my coworkers, uh, universal. And um, I, I guess the last thing I'll say in regards to that is when I started, when this started coming together, one of the things that was an absolute prerequisite for everything that I do with this is to make it simple, mm-hmm. to not make it kind of the new agey, you've got to do this to get where you want to go, because I think a, a lot of people struggle. So I, I, I think of what I'm doing as the common man's guide to self-awareness, self-leadership, and, and hopefully authenticity comes in that. Right, it's not a, right. not a belief system, not a, um, you know, a way that you have to think. It won't make your religion or your spirituality less. I think it'll actually make it deeper. And so that's really kind of just the background. Not a therapist, mm-hmm. just a common guy trying to bring common sense to the world of self-awareness and authenticity and, and understanding hope and that sort of thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. So if you don't mind me asking, um, you were brought, you were, you were presented the Eckhart Tolle book. So like, why did she present it to you? Like, was there stuff? Did she feel like you needed it? I mean, I, you know, I don't know any other no, way. That's a good question. I, you know, I, I don't know the answer to that. I think she always knew. I, I mean, I've always wanted to understand people's behavior, including my own. And, you know, why on the bus in middle school did the boys like to pull the girl's hair and that sort of thing was always kind of a mystery to me. So I think that I, I think that the reason she shared that with me is she enjoyed it, knew it would be something that I would enjoy. Um, Mm -hmm. And boy, oh boy, I had no idea what that would would mean uh, in my life, like huge. Right. And what would it bring you to your life? Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I find him pretty fascinating myself. So um, talking about hope, what, what, like, what do you share overall with people you work with? What, is, what, what comes to your mind when you hear hope? What comes to your mind to share with people when they talk to you about hope? Well, I, I think there's two kinds of hope in the world. Mm -hmm. I think there's the hope that is, oh my God, I hit where I am. And if I just pretend everything's good or gonna be good, and if I just think positively all the time, then everything's going to solve itself. I don't think that's authentic hope. I think when, and I, I don't think that that's a place where most people really find meaning and value in their life. So in my mind, what I want to do is I want to help people to be in touch with the part of themselves it's been coming up a lot for me lately. Uh, the old gospel song, this little light of mine, I want to let it, I'm going to let it shine. Yeah. And so for me, when authentic hope is about being in a place where I am maybe not necessarily all the version of my better self that I want to be, but I feel like I'm operating from that place. And to me, that kind of hope is a whole nother world and something that's so much more fulfilling and has so much more meaning. How's that for an answer? Yeah, that's very good. I, I know like what you were just saying, like you, you can't be positive all the time. It's not, even, it's not even, we're human and things happen all the time. What I have learned myself is to really kind of sit with what's going on, let myself feel what's going on. And I don't want those won't do, but really, feel what's going on and and listen to what my body's wisdom is trying to tell me and then it's like okay now whatever whatever i'm learning from my body's wisdom then i can turn it to a positive i can i can get some some lessons out of sitting in the yuck because you know we what we have to remember all the time is that some of this is a season we are never in it for long it i have the love sitting in the yuck that is a such a great way to put it um i my my word for that is icky yeah okay <laughs> you know? one's good. and 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 that's the thing that you know i what i have struggled with i've, I've been promoting this i've been working on this since 2003 mm -hmm. i've been promoting it for about four or five months now on mm -hmm. on facebook and through podcasts and that sort of thing and one of the things that really scares me are, are how many positive thinking, just ignore the stuff, ignore the yuck. Yeah. Just put that away. And and just be positive. And it's so detrimental because there's a part of us mm -hmm. that's hardwired when we start doing that that says, "Oh no, you don't. Let me show you. You yeah, you go ahead. You pretend that you can be there, but I'm going to show you that it's not going to work." And and we are hardwired that way if if it's like a BS detector. Like if it feels like it's being BS, it's going to light up and say, uh, 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 uh. And, and so, so much of what's out there says, well, just keep moving forward, be positive. And if you don't sit in the yuck, mm -hmm. you're in real trouble. I mean, it, it, it's, it's not, it's not a good thing. Right. Right. And so many people, will use whatever vice they can find to not feel it. And I, I mean, I'm not, um, this is a, you know, I, I've been in this work since 2012, like really deeply in it, but kind of, I don't know, I started in my early twenties. I had an amazing boss. I was a paralegal at the time that he taught me meditation. I was about 23. And I really, st I started, you know, learning more about uh, meditation and, and, and sitting with ourselves, but it's only been since about 2012 that I've really started really paying attention. And I have found that once you sit in it and you don't eat something to get rid of it or smoke something or whatever it is that you're going to do, your body starts giving you more. You start getting more wisdom because it's so wise and we just don't take the time to listen. Well, and, and, and we're, look, we are wired to be, we have a negativity wiring. We have mm -hmm. wiring that wants to prove that we're right often called 
uh, an academia confirmation bias. We have all these things that, and, and so much, you know, what you do in coaching, what I want to help people to do in terms of my questions in the model is I want them to understand that really the biggest goal is understanding that I have that wiring mm -hmm. that serves me in so many ways. It's fight or flight. It's all of that. It's why we're on the planet as a species, because we have that wiring where we're like ready to react at any moment. But now because we don't have lions and tigers and bears to deal with, <laughs> we, uh, that part of us has this tendency to just take over and usually it's in specific parts of our life. It doesn't, unless it, it gets a, a good foothold and starts to generalize, well, this icky thing means everything's icky kind of, mm -hmm. kind of thinking, but mm -hmm. our main goal, your main goal, whether you recognize it or not, is help to help people to take that part of their, that perspective of their personality and get it in balance, mm -hmm. not discard, not say that. It, and if, if, you know, if, if the, the thinking is, oh, you know, you, the ego is the enemy and you've got to destroy it. Oh man, you're in for a life of no fun and, and not much. But if I say, oh, there's that part of my wiring, that perspective of my personality that what I need to do is I need to sit. I just love sitting in the yuck. It's so great. I need to honor that part of me that's really trying to keep me safe socially in my relationships parenting at my job it's always there and i need to hear it mm -hmm. i need to respect it and then i need to talk it down mm -hmm. to a place where now i can move forward and 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 so when you asked about hope for me the biggest aspect of hope is getting that aspect of our personality down below into an authentic place where now I'm my hope becomes the story that I'm telling about what's important to me and where I want to move as opposed to the hope which is I don't like being here just pretend it's all going to be great and we don't get anywhere so so does that does that clear clarify that I want to be the common man's guide to <laughs> for sure for sure <laughs> Um, you know, I, I'm just, just wondering, I, like when I was young, um, well, I mean like really young, I, um, I was always drawn to people like making everything okay. Like just wanting to be there to help. Were you the same way? Even just being curious about the boys oh, and the girls yeah, details? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and I don't know about you, but for me, I was raised with a narcissistic father. Everything was about him. And because she's still alive, I'll just leave it at and a mom who just wanted everything to be okay. Oh, mom. Yeah. And, and, and so I think that my caring for people came from two aspects, right? One is, oh, I don't want to be like him. I, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that was really great about my dad, but yeah. <laughs> there was a lot of stuff that just wasn't. Um, and so then the other thing was, you know, as far as wanting to take care, because my mom, like, you know, growing up with my mom was a really lovely and wonderful thing the problem ended up being that, you know, mom wasn't there when I was an adult to take care of all the issues and that sort of thing that I ran into. And I'm not, and it's not faulting either of them. They did the best that they knew how, right? There's a story about how to keep people, how to take the tough stuff and, and make it useful. Um, and, and so I think that's probably where the, that kind of deep empathy came from. Right. I, I, I get that because I was, well, my dad always provided for us, but it was kind of like the same situation. He was one of my abusers and, you know, and I actually like I, I, I wrote a little bit about it the other day because he he turned 86 and I had called him and it, and I said, you know, dad, why don't we go to lunch today? And immediately when I said that and he said, yes all this like anxiety rose up in me because it's still to this day, the stuff that it, it affects me. And it's like, I, I kind of like, even what I'm going to wear, well, how would I look the best? How would I look the thinnest? Cause he always told me I was 
well he did that to my mind did that to my that. sister yeah. all the time yeah awful so yeah and that it's it's completely i mean worthless by telling your daughter that no man's going to want you because he's too fat and i was never big like that and and either way whether i was or i wasn't it's not still not something you tell your daughter so all this anxiety rose up and i had to tell myself you know what you're okay wear whatever you want you're okay and just telling myself it's all right you got this you're okay and, and you, just taking the time to listen to what she's trying to tell me absolutely and we are so the aspect of us that carries that that baggage which is the same piece that I've been talking about, you know, kind of up in this place. Um, it carries all that scripting that got handed down from dad and from mom, whatever she did, or my mom to make it all right. And, and when you recognize that and stop pushing it away and really address it, I, I am a huge proponent of long hand writing like in cursive if you know how to do cursive because because you don't get distracted by writing each letter or typing on a, a keyboard right and when you as this part of you it talks in circles and it it wants to keep you safe from all of that crap that dad gave you but it <laughs> as long as you let that happen it's there. And so for you, the other morning I had to uh, do it, had to, I got to do um, a webinar for two hours. First one I've done with all the stories we tell. And I woke up and I was pretty spun up and I knew it. I knew it was coming from that wiring in my brain. And so what I did is I sat down for no more than 10 minutes, Ugh. started with right where I was. I'm stressing out about this. I hope all the technology works, blah, blah, blah. And so step one, and this is the same with in terms of hope is how do I get that part of my thinking in balance that is really trying to help me, really trying to keep me yeah. safe and address it straight on. I mean, think of the things that you and, and your audience and I, for me, for sure, I mean, I, that little piece of me can drop F-bombs, tell me I'm the p biggest piece of garbage, oh, blah, oh, blah, blah, right? And But when yeah. you actually listen to it and let it, I, I equate it to, I think about poor airport counter agents right now, right? Can you imagine being a counter agent in an airport with all these yeah, canceled flights? Think about it. This is this is that aspect of your person of our personalities that marches up. Mm. I'm mad. I'm not going to take it. You're a bad person. Your airline sucks. And the whole time, the the counter agent is attentively listening, yeah. and there's this big balloon of anger, and as it goes on and they let it happen and let it happen and get smaller and smaller and smaller. Mm -hmm. And then for a lot of people, they run out of things to say and they get this sheepish little grin on their face like, oh my God, where did that come from? Still mad, still frustrated. Yeah. And then that counter agent says, okay, I'm really sorry for where, how you're feeling. Mm -hmm. I don't blame you one bit, no pushback, no resistance let's see what we can do to solve this. Right. And probably 90% of the time it works. We don't do that with ourselves because that part of us, I like to call it the protector with a capital P, mm -hmm. the That's protector right. wants to yell and scream and, and pretend that, that that's all that needs to happen. Mm -hmm. And it's not. So when we talk about hope, my first thing is how do I get that aspect of my personality Mm -hmm. to vent so that I can move on the same way the counter agent does because it's really the, exactly the same thing except for it's all happening in here <laughs> it is it, it totally is um we are gonna go for a quick break but I, yeah I want to touch on a couple more things when we get back on that um so Chris where can everybody find you before we take a break Oh, the stories we tell .com, please. And then also, um, if your audience would do me the biggest favor, go to uh, youtube.com and search for Oh, the stories we tell a little blue thought bubble. Mm 
with orange writing that says, oh, the stories we tell will come up, click on that, hit subscribe so that I can get to 100 subscribers. And then, I, yes. and then at that point, I'll be able to say youtube.com forward slash other stories we tell. But until then, just search for other Wonderful. stories we tell. That's great. All right, everybody, we'll be right back. And you can find me at www.martineemmons.com, M-A-R-T-I-N-E-E-M-M-O-N-S. Thank you, everyone. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone, to Transformation with Martine. This is where we overcome everything and compromise nothing. My guest today is Chris Templeton. And we have been talking about, in my community, we called we call it the um, self-abuse room where we spend time in there picking on ourselves. And, and I was just telling Chris on a break here that uh, my husband mentioned yesterday about um, taking things, you know, to heart, things that are said. Um, and then really just spending more time, just beating himself up about it. And, and he said, he goes, maybe I just need to like close the door more and not let anybody in. And, and I said, I just invite you to think that there's nobody keeping you in that room. You're in that room yourself. And the way to kind of the stop that abuse is just to listen to that part of you that as Chris called it, your protector, ego, but protector. And just listen to what it has to say because it's trying to keep you safe. And if you just give it a few minutes, just like all of us as humans, we want to be heard, right? So if you give that a little bit of time and just hear it and then talk to it and then just tell them, you know what, I'm ready to do this, that, or the other. I am ready to move forward in my life. I am ready to take on this project. I am ready to make my coaching business bigger. I'm ready to do these things. I got this. It's okay. Thank you for protecting me. Boy, you said it right on the money. And, that, and, and, and that's why... I want people, uh, why I say capital P protector, this part of you is critically important. It has all kinds of good stuff in terms of identifying the problem. That's really, really, really crappy at coming up with solutions, right. but knowing the problem and then putting them in perspective, mm -hmm. it's pretty important. <laughs> For sure, absolutely. So Chris, how did you start Oh, The Stories We Tell? How did that come about? I love well, the name. I, you know, I, as I said at, at the beginning, you know, I read, oh, the, I read, oh, the yeah. story, I read The Power of Now and yeah. was really blown away by it. And um, I spent a lot of time uh, listening to uh, Law of Attraction work uh, by Abraham Hicks. Uh -huh. And the, th the thing that I loved about, that I still love about Abraham Hicks is just, it's commonsensical. And so I kept I, I had my business and I, you know I this idea that oh my gosh the story that I'm telling for, that I picked up from um, Eckhart Tolle really does drive my perception of reality I think so many you know so many new age people say you know it's you create your own reality and people are like well how in the world can you explain to me why that thing just happened that I had no expectation of it happening and I'm creating my reality. And I feel like, you know, if you're somebody that can be at that level of really like I'm creating my reality and, and good at doing that, good on you. For the rest of us, to me, what I realized was that the way that we create our reality is the story that we tell about what's happening. I mean, think about, we put on the dark shades, we put a, a, a cloud over us on so many things, typically what came up with mom and dad, how we were treated in school, what we see on the, what we, you know, what we pay attention to on the media, that sort of thing. When we recognize that we're coloring our own world and that we have the ability to color it. Uh, I think of it as uh, what I want to do is I want people to have the clear glasses on. I want to see clearly. And unfortunately, the the protector part of us either puts on uh, puts a cloud over us and dark glasses or it runs over to the positive side of things and puts on the rose colored glasses and neither of those serve us. It brings up for me, remember in the cartoons, the angel and the devil, 
Oh yeah. That's, yeah. That is both the protector because the, you know, the, it's pretty clear the little devil, right? Yeah. But the angel just wants everything to be okay. And it's not. And yeah. so, you know, recognizing that. So that was really kind of the start was recognizing that, yeah. oh my God, my story mm -hmm. drives my reality. Yeah. It's my story about what's going on. So that was kind of the beginning of it. Yeah. And you know, when you talk about beliefs, I, one that I've had to work on, God, and I'm still working on it. I'll just be real and authentic here. My dad always said in regards to money, never had it, never will. And he actually does have money now. It, you know, he's, he's older, but you know, he does. And that is something that I've really had to like, this, is this my belief at all? Uh -uh. Right. It's not my belief at all. Yet that's something I continually have to work on. They, these things that are dropped down from us, whether it's the money grows yep. on cheese or whatever, but that one just is stuck in my head. Never had it, never will. Too yep. many damn kids. Yep. That's what I always heard. Oh, absolutely. I, I heard, uh, oh, you're always milking me. Oh, man. Oh, and man, we carry that stuff. And that part of that baggage is the exclusive domain of the protector. Hey, I got this. I'm carrying this. That's what I learned. This is, and, and that's why we have a tendency when certain things trigger us, mm -hmm. it's that we have an automa automatic response from the, I got this, I got this. I'm just gonna behave badly right now because you behave badly, right? That sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. There's actually an exercise that I was taught not that long ago from one of my colleagues. And whenever she's like helping somebody get rid of limiting beliefs or whatever, she, she blows up a bunch of balloons and has them hold them all. And, you know, like, okay, this is this belief. This is this, this is this. Do you want to let go of any of those? And then, okay, we're going to let go of some of these. Now, how about this one? Can you let go of that one? If not, back up again, back up again, back up again, back up again. Isn't this exhausting? It's just balloons, but it's not. That's just a example or a metaphor or whatever for all this stuff that we carry around with us. Oh my God, yeah. so much. And, and you know, I, I feel like there was a, you know, there was a time probably 20 or 30 years ago was, you know, my, my inner child and my is, is damaged and that sort of thing. I mean, still, that's a, a concept, but yeah. you know, when you recognize that it's a different part of you than that kind of inner child that we talk about, that we want to be in touch with, um, which I, that's what I refer to as that little light of mine, that part I want to be yeah. more in contact with we have to understand that they're really very, very different animals. They're t it's like a couple, me and, and Betsy. Betsy's tough as nails. I'm not. I'm more mellow. In some cases, my kids would probably disagree with that. But we have two different aspects that are pulling. And this one is always here, that little light of mine that's always shining bright, always. One of the things that really blew me away. Have you seen Jill Bolte Taylor's um, TED talk, her stroke of insight? Yeah. My stroke of insight. Way. Here's a woman who was a brain scientist um, at Harvard or Yale. And she in her mid 30s has a, is at home and has a stroke and knows exactly what's going on. And it shuts down the left side of her brain, which is responsible really for our ability to operate on the planet. So what happened was when that part of her shut down and she knew what was going, oh my God, I'm having a stroke, I'm having a stroke. <clears throat> she ended up feeling bigger, as big as the universe, running what she calls her deep inner peace circuitry. And I was like, oh my God, it's always there. We just got this aspect of us the, primarily in the left side brain, that's all about keeping us safe, making sense mm -hmm. out of everything that's going on. But the minute that that comes down, this there's that little light of mine. It's the same thing with runners high. You know, the, you hear about the marathoners. They run, they run, they start. Yeah. Everything's great. They're super excited, and then it gets harder and it gets harder, and then they're like, got this whole conversation going on about, I don't know if you're going to be able to make it, and all of a sudden. This is what fascinates me. There's something clicks and the protector's like, I, there's nothing left for me to do. That goes away and now we're in runner's high. 
Yeah. Is that wacky? Yeah. Like, yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. I have a friend who ran a marathon not that long ago. And the reason she did it is, was whenever she gets in that state, like, oh my God, I can't do this. I got to, hey, I ran a marathon. So, yeah. And, and that's the thing. I mean, that's really what she's doing in my model is she's talking to the protector and saying, dude, I know it feels that way. I say to my kids and my wife all the time, I know it doesn't always feel like you're crushing it. But from where I stand, you're doing such a solid job. Is it a perfect job? Because I don't want to light the protector up. I want to talk it down. So I'm not like, oh, my God, you're perfect in every way. I don't think that I think the protector's like, oh, yeah, well, let me see if I can prove that wrong. Uh, it's very reactive that way. And man, oh, man, when we start to realize that we can talk that down. And then when we recognize truly that it is this piece of us that we can deal with, Usually I think writing is one of the better ways to do it because it helps it to quiet down mm -hmm. and let the air out of that balloon. So, yep. yeah, I, um, my husband is so, you know, tech and types everything on his iPad or his computer. I love to write. I've got journals, so many journals and I love it. And it just gets it out so yep. much better. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So do you have, say, like mantras or quotes or something that you love to live by? Mm, I, 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 not really. Um, I, I love to live by. Why don't we? Why don't we go into the three questions yeah, uh, of of the model? Because sure. I think it's a, a for me, it's what I live by, and and I think it's a, a, a solid answer. Three yeah. questions that I came up with. What's the story I'm telling? Number one. Yeah what I'm thinking, what I'm visualizing in my head. And the reason for stories is they're automatically editable. Like I, it, I move, it helps me move past, well, that's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. It's just the way it is. I'm angry. That's just the way it is. Okay. Well, let me know if uh, you want to move forward from that place. Right? Yeah. So that's the first question. Second mm -hmm. question is, does it serve me mm -hmm. in this moment, in this moment, in this moment, in this moment, does it serve me? Mm -hmm. And the whole point of this question is, it lets us move past emotion. Mm -hmm. It lets us move past, I'm mad and I'm not going to take it. And that's just the way it is. Yeah. Does it does what I'm thinking serve me? And assuming the answer is no, because typically, we're going to ask that question when we're frustrated or upset or angry or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. Is there a more authentic story we can tell I can tell? And so with, with those three questions, and those are the three questions that I probably, I probably had those developed by developed it was very, very difficult process. Martinet. No, I probably had those questions by the 2010 or so. Mm -hmm. And it changed everything, because I wasn't trying to be enlightened. I wasn't trying to accomplish all these lofty goals. Mm -hmm. I was just dealing with what was coming up. And, you know, Eckhart Tolle calls what I call the, uh, the protector. He calls it the pain body. <laughs> oh, man. The what? What is it? He calls it the pain body. And it's oh, just like, oh, yeah, you know that. God, it's so icky. And, yeah. and so I want to lighten things up. You know, when you, to get to that little light of mine, we got to lighten up just a little bit. And yeah, so anyway, those three questions really, really changed how I perceived everything because now I was taking the time when you, when you, it requires you to take a step back and what I, when I call in my model thinking that's from the protector that doesn't service is always fear-based it's always problem-oriented i call that little me land oh my god i'm up in little me land gotcha. and so so the line between little me land and authentic me land is that question number two is it serving me in this moment mm -hmm. and i usually know right if i say well what do you mean is it serving me in this moment it's not serving you. <laughs> gotcha. Wait. So, so, Wait. you know, when you, those three questions are the mantra that I live by. In, in other words, it's always, and I'm not good at it hundred percent of the time. I don't expect to ever be I, because that's not my goal. That's the kind of goal. 
anything that's 100% man and protectors like, oh, oh, I got to prove that this ain't going to happen, mm -hmm. right? And, and so I want to be easy with myself and authenticity where the real hope lies, where the hope that is, that creates a reality that, that is far more friendly and at ease and curious, um, that's where that happens is when I'm in that authentic me place. Right, right. Yeah, that, that makes so much sense. Um, and that's what I want. I want people to go, oh my God, that makes so much sense. Yeah, and it's easy to understand. Yeah. That's the thing. Yes, and, uh, they, yes. Well, the things that, you know, the way for, well, for us to ex explain ourselves in so many ways, it's like you got to talk to a six-year-old in some ways. Like you got to be able to explain it to a six-year-old. Let me tell you, best question I ever got, mm -hmm. Dad, are you in Little Me Land right now? Oh my God, I am. Like that's part of this is I wanted my yeah. kids to be able to get it. And, yeah. and you know, my daughter who's now has had four kids, I wanted, she says, you know, how's that serving you right now? Oh my God, what a great question. For like sure. they're so simple and easy to incorporate. And yeah. oh my God so powerful so for powerful. sure absolutely 100 percent powerful and <laughs> i wish i would have known a lot more when um, my kids were younger um but i was just kind of in the learning phase at that point too but uh and i still am i mean we're always going to be learning right but i wish i would have known a little bit more when i was at the beginning stages instead of here's the great now. news you can change a story anytime yes you can change it with your kids that are now adults that true. today that and is true. it's that's where forgiveness is yeah. that's where appreciation lives mm -hmm. and you know owning our stuff with our kids and having them go i get it boy mm -hmm. is that powerful isn't it it is and my uh, my 17 year old is very um responsive to all of this i got him a coach not that long ago and he's he's <laughs> really just um brightened up and tackled so many things about him I'm, I'm so excited to see you know what he does my girls are amazing as well i mean they're just they're very open very open so that's that's amazing nice so we're going to take another break here so um chris what can people find you excuse me they can find me at oh the stories we tell dot com oh the stories we tell dot com where you can find me on youtube if you search for other stories we tell um, i'm on facebook a little bit i'm not that great with social media yet but yeah. yes, but they can find you on your website for sure. All yeah. right. Um, everybody will be back in just a moment. Thank you. Welcome back, everyone, to Transformation with Mark Tanay, where we overcome everything and compromise nothing. My wonderful guest today is Chris Templeton, and we've been talking about the stories we tell ourselves limiting beliefs that come up, spending time in the self-abuse room. And um, Chris is going to go into a little bit more in depth about the three questions that he asks himself when he happens to be heading into that room. Sure, absolutely. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put up uh, the model that resulted and just give everybody kind of a, an idea of how it works. So <clears throat> what you can see is three questions, what's the story I'm telling? Mm -hmm. And then uh, is that serving me in the moment? And is there a more authentic story I can tell? And for some reason, my pen's not working. Uh, but what I want people to understand is that when you think about the model and question two, does this story serve me in this moment? Basically, what I'm my goal becomes very quickly is to move myself south in the model. There it goes. Mm -hmm. So everything, I oh, wonder why that's, sorry, it's not behaving. Um, everything that I wanna do is to spend time in authentic me land. Enlighten me, by the way, that's where flow happens and that's where below that is where that little light of mine is. And then outside of the model, is whatever word works for you. Is it God? Is it spirit, the universe, infinite intelligence? Doesn't matter to me, it, it's what works for you. And one of the things that's so important in this model is that what we do is we have 
words that work for us, not somebody else's words that work for them. What are the words that work for me? One of the things I love is dude, <laughs> dude, what in the world are you thinking about? See that laugh right yeah. there? That's, that is what, what I want you to have is what's your personal dude for you it's in the muck for me it's being in a place that's icky and i don't want to be there so when what happens is you look and you say oh my god on the top left corner that's where rage and craziness is and on the top right corner that's where i'm manic and i everything's great and and it's even though it's not and there's kind of this pull above the line in little me land to the negative side and what happens is when I start to talk my protector into a place where my point of focus is below the line, I'm addressing what his concerns are, but I'm now taking the reins and saying, yeah, I know that dad said things that made me feel this way about my looks or about how I, I felt, but you know, um, really, I get to rewrite that story and I rewrite it in words that work for me. And so then the other thing that's really fascinating to me is that when you start spending more time in your authentic me place, you also start to find all these little things, these pieces of meaning, purpose. We don't have a tendency in an unauthentic place to be asking what's the meaning of my life and what's my purpose up above that line oh man you, i'm that that protector is going to do everything that he can to have me feeling like i'm a problem and and if i could just get it right and so what i want people to understand is it's not ever 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 to say don't ever go to little me land because that is not ever happening you're always going to go up there but if what i can do is spend more time just above the line and way more time further south all of a sudden all these little things of meaning that that the protector's like oh that's you know holding my wife's hand what are you talking about oh man i love holding my wife's hand i love driving with her those we love going on trips together and we get way down to that place of of flow which is kind of where the enlightened me area is mm -hmm. and when we start when we take off those dark glasses life is such a better place it's and and from my standpoint it's all 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 about practice so that's the model does that bring up any questions for you in general no um i i think that's it's perfect um and, and it's just taking the time to um dive in there and and talk to that part of ourselves and yep. sometimes it's like gosh i didn't i don't want to do that right now but if and you, guess what if you don't want to do that right now don't that's okay yeah. right yeah. i mean I, I, and other times it makes total sense to say you know what i'm going to sit down and write oh man i just can't can't stress how strong <laughs> writing is how important it is for me you know it just oh i agree such I a agree way to again. Yeah, and we can't always take the time right when we need to or when this is going on, but even a few deep breaths, and it's like, it's okay, we're, we're going to talk later or whatever, if you can just do that, you know, I promise, or even like, you know, sometimes all my soul is calling for is like, I want to get outside, I don't want to be in here working right now, it's like, okay, let's just finish these few things, and I promise you we'll get outside for a walk in a little while, if we just tell ourselves. One of my favorite things is uh, I, I call it the the post-it note method because mm -hmm. we have a tendency to make this so big. And if I just take a little post-it note and I start at the top with what am I feeling? What's the, what's the protector saying? And I don't yeah. want to do this and blah, blah, blah. And then talk about the whys just in brief words. I want to make my client happy. I want to feel better. I know when I get going, like just taking that little bit of time, it doesn't have to be a long conv convoluted writing process. I think there's great value in that, but sometimes just that little bit of shift gets the protection. You go, Oh, okay. All right. I'll step down. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Even if it's just a notch, it helps. Yeah. Anything in my model, anything that you do that moves you South is a good thing. 
for sure. And that for is, sure. and that's what, what's lovely about the model is it's prescriptive. Like, there's no question. I don't want to be in little me land as much. I sure, mm -hmm. I want to be lower than I have to. And, uh, and then I, I want to be lower in that area when I go there. Mm -hmm. And I want to spend more time down at the base. Like, it's so simple to conceptualize and say, oh, where am I in this any, at any given moment? Right, right. Absolutely. So we are, the show will be, our show will be ending in about two minutes. What would you say to someone who just like, oh, Chris, I have so much anger. Uh, I would, what I would say is listen to it. Let the protector out of the box and let him roam free, write down every single thing that he says as often as you have the chance mm -hmm. and let the air out of that balloon. Mm -hmm. Like that's, that's why it's so important to me that we put the protector on a pedestal. Mm -hmm. He's there to help us. And you think about the ego is the enemy. Oh my God, you're doing exact. I think of the protector is, you remember goth kids back in the day, mm -hmm. you know, the black and they're like, see Thank me, you. but don't see me, but don't see me. Like, mm -hmm. see how different I am, but don't, let's not talk about it. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like that's kind of the protector. And so let him out. And then the other thing that I w would say is this is please, please, from here on out, look, forget everything that I said. If you use it, great. But from this moment on, please look at your life as practice. Mm -hmm. That is a great one That's to talk the protector sure. down. Mm -hmm. It is. I, I agree with you hundred percent. So I thank you so very much for being on the show with me today, Chris. It was wonderful to have this chat and I'm, I'm sure we could keep going, <laughs> but, um, so one more time, where can everybody find you? Uh, oh, the stories we tell.com. Please go to youtube.com search for, Oh, the stories we tell blue thought bubble come up with, Oh, the stories in a burnt orange, uh, written inside that click on that please do me the favor of hitting the subscribe button, then go to the honesty project playlist, which I've done with a friend of mine, uh, where she has had a, a rough upbringing. She's in her, I think early sixties now. And we just talk about her issues and then apply to the model to it. So there's lots of great ways for you to get in tune with this. And I promise you, you spend a little time with this. It's going to change your life in ways that you didn't realize you had the power to do. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, we've had a good time and um, please join me next Friday for another show on overcoming everything, compromising nothing every Friday, 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for listening to Transformation with Martinet. Did listening today spark a sense of hope and possibility? Hold on to this feeling and tune in every second and fourth Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific for more inspiring conversations with Martinet and her guests. They will show you there is hope and you are right where you need to be. Martinet is dedicated to supporting you right where you are while launching you towards promise, passion, and possibility that leads to the fulfilled life your heart aches for. If you're tired of being stuck, schedule a complimentary consultation with Martinet and get on the exciting path towards the life you want to be living. Visit martinetemmons.com and make your appointment today.